I had watched it years back. But the reason why I wanted to bring it up today is because there are quite a few parallels to the Orin and Orson and Summer Wells investigations. Um, you'll see them, but to me, what stands out is they knew all along and they had thousands of people looking for this little guy. They knew where he was at, okay, because they did it. So let's start his story, guys. It's pretty sad, but you will see the parallels. Let me know what you think. Well, ten years ago, a little boy lost his life at the hands of his foster parents. The tragic life of three-year-old Marcus Faisal, that is, captured the hearts and minds of the entire tri-state, in fact. Yeah, and thousands of you searched in vain for that little boy who was already dead. And thousands more of you sat stunned when you heard at home how he died. Nine on your side anchor Tanya O'Rourke takes you back 10 years to when this story first broke. And she looks ahead at what's really changed all these years later. My husband, myself, nobody harmed him. Nobody hurt him. Okay, you guys, she already knew he was dead at this point. But look at this interview. That's pretty convincing to me. I wouldn't have been able to sit here and listen to her and immediately recognize that she already knew he was dead. There's no way. I mean, she sounds really convincing. But know this, she knew he was dead. Okay, let's go on. We suspected her from the very start that she knew what happened to this kid. August of 2006, on the day that Liz Carroll, foster mother to Marcus Faisal, stood in Juliffs Park pleading for someone to find her son. I remember the whole town was turned upside down looking for this little kid. Hundreds of volunteers had searched the Hamilton County Park for days and days. On Does that sound familiar? Hundreds of volunteers. I mean, they were out there and there was donations set up for funds to find him. A lot of volunteers, you guys. And what they did not realize was a fool's errand. Liz's husband, David, took a lie detector test. My, like my husband said, he doesn't believe that was accurate. Third okay, he took a lie detector test and failed miserably. The reason behind that is he already knew. And she is still, listen, you guys, she is still standing up for him. And she knows, okay? She knows he's dead because they did it. But look at this. She will still stand behind him and probably would have till the bitter end. Self-preservation's kicked in and boy, she's going to take it to the next level and make sure that he doesn't get arrested and go to jail for this or her either. So she's really backing him, but believe me, she knows already the little guy is gone. 13 days later, the stunning announcement from Hamilton County Prosecutor Joe Dieters. Liz and David Carroll had killed the boy they were charged with caring for. I mean, we're missing our son. It's a horrible thing that they did to this baby. They could hear him screaming in the closet when they left. A closet, Dieter says, where the temperatures reach between 105 and 115 degrees. David. Let me tell you a little something about this part. They're leaving a little bit out, or quite a bit. What happened was this man and woman decided to have sex and then they were going to go to a family reunion. But they didn't want this little guy, this beautiful little angel, in their way. So they taped him up and put him in the closet. I don't know about the screaming part. I didn't hear that before, so that's that's new. But they taped him up, put him in that closet, and he died in there. And they went to the family reunion, left him in there, took the family dog, because, oh, you wouldn't want to do your dog this way, right? Left this baby in that closet and went to a family reunion. I'm just, I'm broken over this. My little heart breaks over this. He's such a beautiful little guy. But okay, let's continue. David and Liz had a live in lover, Amy Baker. David and Baker took Marcus's body to this old chimney and burned him over and over again. Then they chucked what was left in the Ohio River. That was Marcus Faisal. What's left of Marcus Faisal? 
would fit in this cup. Liz Carroll got a 54-year sentence. This is part of Prosecutor Woody Breyer's closing statement. And who did it? She did. And you know, they say you wouldn't treat a dog like that. And you know what? She wouldn't. She took the dog with her. Yes. She took the dog with her. Oh, my, my God. With all my heart and soul. David Carroll cut a deal. He got 15 years to life. And those left behind? It, it really changed a lot of people who were involved in the case. Not just people, legislation. In 2009, the Ohio Supreme Court adopted Rule 49, which provides what's called guardian ad litems for each foster child. That person is the liaison between the court and the foster system. Ohio also revoked LifeWay for Youth's license. That's the foster care company that placed Marcus with the Carrolls. And Ohio Job and Family Services says it has increased mandatory training for caseworkers and put greater emphasis on placing foster kids in permanent adoptive homes. Now, you know, I see here that they are really coming down on the caseworkers and their training, but truthfully, I just don't think that they would have seen what was coming no matter what. This house was not destroyed. There was food. This child didn't look beat on. I still don't think they would have pulled him out. And I think they wouldn't have seen anything bad before they put him in this family. So, yeah, they are partially at blame, I'm sure. I'm not sure what happened with that or the end of that. But I do know the things that I'm seeing that are similarities with Orin and Orson West and Summer Wells is that somebody knew from the beginning what happened. Somebody knew. Okay. And to me, I think somebody knows in both of these cases in Summer Wells and Orin and Orson West. I believe somebody knows already what happened. And with Summer Wells, I'm thinking that pretty soon it's about to end. Somebody is going to come forward or break and tell the truth because this always comes out in the end. Now, Orrin and Orson West haven't been found yet. And, of course, we know Summer hasn't been found yet. But to me, I believe that these babies coming up missing like this. There's an adult in there somewhere that knows what happened to them. So soon I think we're going to find out what happened to little Summer. And I think soon we're going to find out what happened to Orin and Orson West. Because this, this little guy, oh my gosh, this Marcus, he was a doll baby. But think about it, you guys. There was no... um obvious reason for what happened to him blatant murder and they're calling it an accident the accident that happened to Marcus um, I'm gonna have to go with that's not a damn accident okay you put a baby in a closet and you taped him up did you think that he was going to live forever in there no you knew what you were gonna do but they really based the word accident all the way through the trial as much as they could. It didn't get them off. The jury seen through it. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Please comment below and let me know what you think. Are you seeing similarities or is this just me seeing too much crime? Because you know I live on it. Maybe you see something I didn't see. If you see that, please let me know. Comment below. I love you guys' comments. That's what led me to this case to begin with. One of my subs led me to this case. And so I do read your comments, and I do love to hear from you. So please comment below, guys. Let me know what you think. Bye for now.